Let's talk about user experience. User experience is something that, if it's done right, you'll never think about. But when it's done poorly, not only will you notice it, it could ruin the experience of a game. User experience encompasses a lot of different things for a game, but for a general statement, user experience, or UX, is how easy a game is to use, not play. This means how concise the menus are, are the tutorials effective, is the playing getting appropriate and good feedback when they make mistakes, and in things like competitive games, how good is the matchmaking, how easy is it to get into a match, can they keep up the dopamine cycle enough long enough so that you don't leave. Every game has to consider these things, and generally the best competitive games have between good and amazing user experiences, so they keep a large player base with high investment in the game, but what about fighting games? Oh god, it's terrible. Fighting games for some reason have always really struggled with user experience, ever since we entered the online age. Most modern competitive games require an online community for new people to get into the game, keeping the wider community connected and letting the small players feel like they could one day become a pro player. The FGC has always been an offline community, as any amount of lag can make the game experience feel like crap, especially if you have things to do like one frame links. This also doesn't help with the fact that most fighting games have delay based netcode and only now rollback is becoming the standard. Because of the offline presence, it's harder for newbies to feel like they can become the best and that this could turn them into a pro player. I know not every player wants to try and be the best, but with the way that most fighting games are going, that being the path of eSports, they're going to need to do a better job of hooking players and keeping them in the loop so that they can get more players than just weirdos in their rooms writing video essays because they're obsessed. Wait, so where do we start? Well, learning how to play the game would be a good start, so let's start with the tutorials. Video games are a strange activity and art form, as you have to be taught how to play them correctly, and there are things that you can do wrong that normally lead to a game over or even a loss. This is strange in media because there's not really a wrong way to watch a movie or read a book unless you're doing it on purpose. The way that most games teach players on what to do and what they should be doing is through tutorials. This may be a specific level, a wall of text, just random pop-ups for the entire fucking game. Whatever way they do it, the designers make sure that players know what they can do and how to play the game, most of the time. Are these all equally effective? No, of course not. There's countless games that people are confused with what to do, but fighting games generally have it the worst. There's a lot of concepts you have to learn going into any competitive game. Not all of these concepts are taught in the game's tutorials, however, the general tutorials are very good at getting across the general idea ideas with drills you can run through and giving you players a nice space to practice everything that they just learned without the threat of other players or ranked. Hell, in League of Legends you can't play ranked until you hit level 30, meaning that you have a large amount of time to learn the game and get champions under your belt. There are things that you'll probably need to look externally for, but the base knowledge of the game is given to you in an interactive and interesting way. Now, let's look at the two biggest fighting game franchises and see how they teach new players. Tekken is seen as one of the hardest fighting games on the market right now, having gameplay that rewards legacy skill and matchup knowledge going as far back as Tekken on the PlayStation 1. Every character has over 100 moves and the roster has grown to one of the biggest in single character fighting games. There's a lot of advanced things you need to know depending on the character like Korean backdashing, wave dashing, which way to sidestep, what do you do when you sidestep, how to break throws, how to make a mix up, how to whiff punish, what are your poking tools, what should you do when you want to commit, what's safe, how do I sub to Julia? There's a lot, so at least having a baseline understanding of the game would be nice. So. Let's check out the tutorial and see what it tells us. Um, where's the tutorial? What do you mean it doesn't have one? Oh, that's bullshit! Yeah, so Tekken 7 just doesn't have any tutorials at all. The game doesn't tell you what buttons to attack, how to block, what rage does, or even how to win a round. It doesn't even tell you how many rounds you need to win! I know this is obvious stuff for most of us, but if John Fortnite Lover 65 comes and tries Tekken and they've never played a fighting game, they won't know. Hell, most people who play 2D games will probably need a tutorial telling them that it's best 3 out of 5 instead of the standard 2 out of 3 rounds. Maybe Street Fighter does it better. Well, I guess it exists, therefore it is better. Still though, this is the driest tutorial I've ever seen. Seriously, you spend less time controlling Ryu than you do watching him chat shit with Ken. And this is the only tutorial that you can actually control. Like, what does this teach a new player about Street Fighter? You can attack? Not all fighting game tutorials are bad, but even the best ones have problems. Schoolgirls and Eunice generally are considered to have the best tutorials, but after playing them I've still forgotten several things about both games several times, and I always forget them because it's just... 
text. It's just so much text. I don't want to read a novel. I want to play a Spider-Man. Players aren't able to retain the information in these tutorials because it just isn't as engaging as actually playing the game and most people just skip them. Both of these cause news players to have the same problem of not learning what to do by either not telling the player or overwhelming the player with information and not letting it sink in. How do we fix this? Well, that's for another video. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry everyone. It turns out I forgot something from Street Fighter. Street Fighter has videos. Just videos of everything. Where are they? Well, about that. When it comes to basically every game, the menu has to make sure that you can find what you need easily if you have to change something or go back to a tutorial or something. But the best thing it can do is get you back into the game ASAP. Single player games basically always have the first option as continue, so you can just mash through the menu to get back to your one save file. And under that is generally new game and load game in case you're a psychopath. Comparative games generally have a similar idea. Press the big play button. Do you want to play ranked? Okay, you now you're in a queue. Have fun. How do fighting games do it? If you wish to face the players of ranked matchmaking, you must answer me these questions free. How is anyone who hasn't played this game before supposed to know what these options are? How the fuck are you supposed to know that matchmaking is at the back? Oh, my apologies. You can talk to this man right here and he gives you a text menu. Then why did they just make it a fucking text menu? I don't know what it is about Team Red over at Arxis, but they are extremely fond of these quests. Key lobbies. Like, bro, look at Strives. What the hell is this? Why do I gotta stand at this and wait for somebody? Why can't I just be in a random queue and you match us together? You know, like a matchmaking system or something. But you could do that by waiting in training mode. Then why isn't that the first goddamn option? These menus make it actively hard to play the game against other people. And there's gonna make people turn off the game and go play something else. Like, seriously. How many people do you know that have been turned off a strive because of these lobbies and how they just don't function properly. At least some games get you into the matchmaking well. Don't get too cocky, Street Fighter. You started this, remember? Do you want to do the tutorial again, even though it's crap? Well, guess where you find it? Story mode. It's in the story menu. What? And where are the videos I was on about? In challenges. Fucking challenges. What the f- it's fine, dude. At least Tekken has distinct labels for ranked and casual play and lets you go into them easily. Even as a Wi-Fi indicator. That's really nice. I could go enjoy a game of Tekken. Oh, man, that was a good match. Let's play for another round. Get ready for the next battle. Battle, battle, battle. Huh. Okay, how about another one? Get ready for the next battle, battle, battle. Uh-huh. Okay, just one more. Get ready for the next battle. Seriously? A large amount of a game's development is dedicated to making sure that the game is polished. Bugs are ironed out, everything looks nice, and the game flow is easy to access and enjoyable. Fighting games, for some reason, always seem to skimp out on the polish for their online modes, however, and it just feels like we see the same things over and over again. That thing with Tekken? It was a remnant of when Tekken 7 was an arcade game, since the arcade boards need to load all the information back on in between rounds. PC and consoles don't need to do this, though, so why do we have to get ready for the next next battle when we rematch? Lack of polish. That's why. Why can't you skip the intros when you're fighting someone online because it causes the game to stutter and go crazy? Lack of polish. That's why. Why don't the strives lobbies work? Lack of polish. I get that you can't make sure that everything works perfectly in a game, but these things seem like they pretty obviously need fixing and just don't work well enough. Remember that time when the community fixed Street Fighter V's netcode and they just stopped you from using it and didn't fix it themselves? That's not lack of polish, that's just disrespect. I didn't even have a point for this, I just wanted you to remember it. My point with all of this being is that if we want players to stick around and enjoy these games, developers need to be able to get players into the game cycle better and keep them there without aggravating them until they leave. Is it easy? Obviously not, but it's definitely possible. I just hope newer games fix these issues so we don't have to rip our hair out every time somebody skips the intro. God damn it. This originally was going to be the end of the video, but I kind of want to just give a shout out to Battle for the Grid. Battle for the Grid is a indie game, basically, made on a very tight budget, but it does all of these things really well. Uh, its lobbies are really good. It has four-way crossplay. You can skip the intros, which is amazing. And... 
the online matchmaking works perfectly with Robot Netcode. It's not the best. It doesn't have the best tutorials and it could really do with like a combo trial or something, but it did really good and I feel like with all the negativity that's been in this video, it would just be nice to bring it up at the end and let you guys know that there are still good examples of this. If you have any good examples of good tutorials, uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.